Hi, today I want to speak to you about a very important topic. The topic is the Zohar. What is the Zohar? Well, the Zohar, apart from being the central book of post-13th century Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, it is also a commentary on the Torah that claims to hold all the mystical secrets of the divine. The book is also held as a divinely inspired work in Judaism, believed to be written by the hand of our great sage, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. However, today I'm going to try to fill you in on why this book is not divinely inspired and actually distorts Torah and perverts the monotheistic ideal laid down in Torah. Friends, as the ambassadors of Akodesh Borohu, we have to be very careful on what we consider and call revealed or divinely inspired for the very reason that the redemption of the world rests on our shoulders. Now, many will just say, for me to keep my mouth shut, just because the Jewish people as a whole have already accepted the Zohar, not only as revealed, but also as halakhically binding. But my friends, I can't. Ultimately, because there is a purpose in being a Jew, a purpose that we are aware of only through the divine revelation as properly transmitted through our Masorah. So by irresponsibly adding titles with unknown origins and not even Chazal accepted or knew existed could end up watering down the purpose of Torah, which is not to give us some mystical trip, but rather to physically make the world a better place. So let's talk about the Zohar's history. In the 13th century, Rabbi Moshe de Leon, a Spanish mystic, began selling booklets to his fellow Kabbalists that contained teachings that no one has ever heard before. These booklets, he claimed, were part of a greater work that was written by the great Tana, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Rashbi, in Eretz Yisrael a thousand years before. Mind you, no one ever heard of these works before. Then Rabbi Yitzhak of Akko, a well-known Kabbalistic rabbi from Israel, was interested in seeing the original manuscript because he was from Eretz Yisrael and he also never heard of it. Rabbi Yitzhak traveled all the way to Spain to see if he could see the original manuscript supposedly written by the Rashbi. But when he reached Spain, Rabbi de Leon had already passed away without ever showing anyone the text. Rabbi Yitzhak, in his search for truth, arranged to purchase the manuscript from the widow of Rabbi de Leon, but she confessed to him that there was no manuscript, that her husband made the whole thing up. She said that when she used to see him writing with no manuscript in front of him, she used to ask him, why do you work so hard and then put someone else's name on it? And he responded, if I told people I wrote it, they would pay nothing for it, but if I attribute it to the Rashbi, they would. This news devastated Rabbi Yitzchak, but it was too late to put the cat back in the bag. The myth of the Zohar was already widespread, injecting its mystical ideas into every facet of Jewish life. Actually, the majority of the Zohar as we know it today wasn't even produced by Rabbi Moshe de Leon, but rather by many, many authors after Moshe's death who in the same way thought to get their ideas canonized under the pen of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Even the Kabbalists of today will admit to these later additional Zoratic texts, but in their blind mystical stupor still attribute them to the Rashbi. Why? Because mysticism is all-consuming and feeds on the rational and the practical areas of one's life. That's how many Jews today believe that this text is even more important than our written law, Chospeshalom. Nowadays, it's actually almost impossible to escape its pagan influence. Why? Because so many of our minhagim and our halachas lamaisa are based on its ideas. Ideas like the polytheistical spheros, breaking God into parts and even into a sexual being, praying to the dead, reincarnation, Gnosticism, pantheism, blood superiority, messianic fervor, its, its erroneous chronology, its scriptural errors, its linguistical errors, demonology, magic, and much, much more that apart from being antithetical to Judaism, makes one a purposeless Jew by stripping away the practice message from the Torah and replacing it with a mystical worthless one. These ideas of the Zohar gave birth to the long streak of failed messiahs from Shabtai Tzvi to the Lubavitch Rebbe and is actually the main rabbinic book that Christians use to justify their heretical beliefs with Jews. But However, the biggest problem of it all is that Judaism, apart from only accepting the book as a revealed text, has also began to codify Jewish law through it. So that 
nowadays is almost impossible to be considered a kosher Jew without it. Many, many rabbis are well aware of these things, but have to stay silent on the issue lest they are ostracized from their communities. So no, this doesn't mean that one has to drop all the customs that we've accepted as a whole from the Zohar till now, because that, apart from being virtually impossible, would just alienate you from Claw Yisrael. My advice would be to strive to slowly adopt Jewish law that was codified before the 13th century, which was the year the Zohar was written, and teach others to do the same so as to slowly wean Kal Israel from this impurity. Friends, together we can work to strip Judaism of its pagan ideas and return it to a physical, purposeful belief system. Thank you.